A few years back, Walther and Umarax launched the Rotex, or is it the Rotec, or the RM8? That depends on where you live and the power you have. I live in England, dull, cold and rainy England. So does this variant of the Rotex, Rotec, RM8, make my day any brighter? Let's find out. Hello there and welcome to the Airgun Gear Show. This is the Walther Rotex RM8 Ultra Compact Varmint, the shorter barrel version of the Rotex with the included moderator and the thumbhole ABS stock. This one is 2.2 and it's sub 12, so England and Wales friendly. And providing you're of the correct age and never been involved in a heist, you can own one. The scope on top, yes, is more than the rifle. I have got a bit carried away, I will admit. But England has long dark nights and I want to shoot in the pitch black for many reasons. Mainly that I am so fat and slow nowadays that what I'm after sees and hears me coming from the next county. So I have gone full south night vision with a PARD NV008 LRF on top and the review of that scope is coming soon. So what have we got then? Well, it's 3.7 kilograms in weight and 78 centimeters long minus the moderator. And with the moderator, it's 92 centimeters long. And the barrel is 33 centimeters long. That barrel works well, but do keep it clean. It will help, but don't use a cleaning pellet. The manual says no. I'm unsure why, it just says no. Pick rail on the front of the stock, that's nice. And the stock is an ABS plastic one. Sounds hollow and solid in different places. Stippling all over and the action is all metal. And the magazine is a very simple eight shot rotary system. Nothing clever, it's designed to just work and it loads from the left. Big side action bolt, dovetail rail on top and I've added a conversion to Picatinny rail plus an auto reset at the rear, which engages with every shot and is resettable between fire and safe. The trigger is plastic, but quality. And yes, there is a small amount of adjustment underneath. Rubberized shoulder pad and the cheek piece is fixed, but works well and is just right for most scope heights. There is a fill gauge underneath and it fills via a probe recommended to 232 bar. Why 232 bar? I don't know. It's kind of like the BSA. Here's a good game. You try filling to 232 bar using a bottle. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Shot count in 22. I'm getting around 140 shots on the nose from a full fill. And I found from my testing that once you shoot down yeah. to around 110 <laughs> on the gauge on the rifle, it still shoots. But for longer ranges, this would be my recommended top-up point. It's nice and consistent in the shot string, thanks to the regulated system. And it kicks out with a 15.89 grain pellet in the area of 550 feet per second. You want to go faster, use a 13.43 Jumbo RS. But the barrel doesn't like those pellets downrange. And talking about downrange, let's talk accuracy. Many, many hours I've been at this, and my big conclusion, it's the Hades for pest control out to 50 yards. FX or JSB's 15.89s for general target work, and if you want to bash out pellets and smack stuff out to 25 yards, it's the RWS Fields in 5.51, let's be clear. Now, I'm not going to claim that this is going to outshoot a 1500 pound rifle, let's be clear. But on a day like today, where my wind wizard is saying I'm at two degrees and I've got gusty winds up to sort of three and a half, four kilometers an hour coming and going, you know, I would say the fact that I'm getting groups at 50 yards is pretty good. I am cold, I'm telling you, I am cold. Oh, where are we up to? That was four, that was a 4.8 gust. I'm it's trying to snow. But every rifle is different. That's the fun 
of shooting air guns. You have to test, find out what works and understand your ranges. It's addictive, I can tell you. Plus, the wind is always gonna add into the unknown. Out of the box, it's charge, load, zero and go. Just shoot and have fun. But tuning to within an inch of your life for legal limits, changing barrels or adjusting power is not an option here. This is a rugged PCP, which is capable of being bashed and not. For me, this is a pitch black ratter setup, which is exactly what I've been using it for. Right, for this bit, you're gonna wanna see me put the gun up to my shoulder and shoot, because that's what we do in reviews, but it is utterly bitterly cold and trying very hard to snow. So shall we just get on with this bit uh, and I can tell you what I think. There you go. I hit the crow at 25 yards. It comes up to the shoulder really nicely. It's comfortable and easy to use and that thumb hole stock means you can walk around in the field with it all day long. Right, let's move on because I'm cold. Loading each shot, well, the action is firm. The last few mils when the bolt drops back over the sears requires a meaningful action. And yes, the rotation of the magazine can be a little notchy with variations noticeable depending on the quality of the pellets you use. The rear pull stroke cocks the gun and the forward stroke rotates the magazine and indexes the pellet. Over time, it does ease, but it does not have the silk of a more expensive rifle. However, that is not what this is about. The Rotex hit stuff, that's it. I need to hit that over there and believe me, it will. I'm empty on the mag. I am. It is so cold out here. Oh, I gotta tell you that even, even between my fingers, look, I and mean, you can't see that, but the skin on my fingers has actually split from being outside over these last few days. And my fingers are actually bleeding now while I shoot. Yeah, I better clean the gun in case anyone else has a go with it. Not likely though, because I'm having way too much fun. Put that on record, and we're off again, Mr. Crow. Headshot on the crow. That's the only thing is that that is an eight shot mag and it's like you have to count where you've got to because you're like, was that the sixth or the seventh? You feel like Dirty Harry every now and again. Did I fire six or seven or eight? Don't forget the K3 Neo Silencer up front, whoever named that, and it's well made. No, really, it's designed well and works. Does it outperform a third party add-on? Well, you have to decide. That's a row I'm not gonna start. But it's half inch UNF, so you can make a change if you want. I tell you, you wanna go plinking in the dark, my pitch black setup works. So to conclude, what do I think of the Rotex RM8 Varmint? Well, budget-wise, depending on the model, they come in between 400 and 500 pounds in the UK. That's a good chunk of buttons, but it's not 1500 quid. And what you're shooting at in the field doesn't care what fired the pellet. It just needs to know if it's lights out time or not. It's not a competition winning rifle, but set right an ideal 25 yard pester, pellet on pellet, and with practice 50 yards all day long. Plenty of shots, plenty of smiles, and you have to decide Rotex, RM8, or Rotec. I prefer my pet name, Pitch Black, and I think these two need to stay together for a long time. 
just like posh and bex. And I need to have a long, hard negotiation with myself and see what I can work out to keep this. If you want more reviews on anything Airgun in the world, please visit airgun101.com. If you do a Google, just add Airgun 101 or 101 after what you're searching for. Save time, cut the fluff and just 101 it. It also has all the links to what you need. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay well, look after yourselves. Cheerio! Thank mm -hmm. you.